Hallow from Jonathan and from me. Welcome to the programme. First tonight, a small village in Suffolk remains in shock after two builders were killed when a barn wall collapsed on top of them. The accident happened in Whirlingworth near I yesterday afternoon. The men were converting a barn off Shop Street when the gable end fell down, crushing them both. Well, Anglia Serena Sandy was one of the first journalists on the scene last night and we can join her now. Serena, what more do we know this evening about exactly what happened then? Well, emergency services were actually called to this quiet residential street yesterday afternoon after a dog walker raised the alarm. Paramedics tried to resuscitate two men, but to no avail. Today, the men have been named locally as Kevin Ruffles, who's in his 50s, and 19-year-old Matthew Skeet from Halsey and Woodbridge, respectively. Now, you can see the digger behind me that's got Mr Ruffles' name on it. This morning, the grim task began of investigating just what really did happen here last night. In daylight, the true horror of what happened here is clear. The void where the original red brick gable end of this listed building used to stand. Tons of rubble still remain, evidence of the tragedy that took place. It was at around five o'clock yesterday afternoon that this quiet residential street in Whirlingworth was overrun by emergency services. It all really happened very quickly. So f from coming back, we just looked over the road and there's this great hole in the end of the building. It had gone. Um, yes. And after that, I mean, everybody just arrived. You know, the ambulance, more fire and rescue, the police arrived. A dog walker raised the alarm when the wall of this 18th century old Maltings barn collapsed, trapping two men underneath. Both suffered severe injuries and, despite attempts by air ambulance paramedics to resuscitate them, both men died at the scene. Normal building going on. I have been in there for a year, 18 months now, and um, quite, quite horrendous, really. Terrible. It's um, somewhere as quiet as this, and you have something like this happen. I mean, it's the sort of thing you read in newspapers happening elsewhere, but not somewhere as quiet as this. I was here last night as relatives of the deceased watched on. Rescue teams sifted through the rubble by hand. It took more than two hours to confirm there were no other people trapped inside. The men, thought to be Kevin Ruffles and Matthew Skeet, were subcontractors working on underpinning the foundations of this former pigsty. They were employed by a firm who were converting the barn into three houses. Today, a single yellow rose was left in tribute. Mr Ruffles used to be a landlord at the Shepherd and Dog in Halsey. Visually, he's certainly a gentle giant. He was, uh, you couldn't miss Kevin. Um, and he was a really genuine guy, and uh, he'd, he'd help anybody. And uh, you know, nothing, nothing, was, uh, nothing was too much to help, you know, for him to help someone else. Detectives from Suffolk Police and a team from the Health and Safety Executive visited the site today to try and piece together how this tragedy happened. We're keen to know that, um, that the cause of the accident, whether there's any criminal offences involved, is something uh, that the police have to establish. And as I say, we're drawing on the expertise of the Health and Safety Executive and, and their experts. But um, it's important that we find out what happened, also for the, the, the family's perspective. Although incidents like this are rare, there is still much grief today in this small village for the two men who will not be returning home. Well, Serena, back to you. Clearly the investigation is at a very early stage, but what's the situation there tonight? Well, Becky, what we do know tonight is that Suffolk Police are actually leading the investigation and they're actually being assisted by the Health and Safety Executive. Now, post-mortems have been carried out today on both of the bodies, but their results haven't yet been released. Now, what we do expect tonight is that formal identification of the two men is expected to take place and we do expect over the weekend that those names will be officially released. Serena, thanks very much. The wife of a navigator who fell 6,000 feet to his death from an RAF tornado three years ago says she hopes that lessons have been learned. The body of Michael Harland, who was 44, was found near Great Barsham in North Norfolk after his seat detached as the aircraft was flying upside down. Well, today, the jury at an inquest returned a verdict of accidental death. Alpa Patel joins us now from the newsroom. Alpa. 
Yes, although this inquest has returned a verdict of accidental death, the coroner, Jacqueline Lake, said today there was a clear conflict in the evidence. 44-year-old Michael Harland was the head of flight operations for BAE Systems. He died on a test flight out of RAF Marham in November 2007 when his ejector seat slipped from a tornado travelling 5,000 miles above Norfolk. Accident investigators had concluded that a locking device which prevented the seat from slipping when the jet was flying upside down had not been properly fitted and checked. RAF technicians had argued a spring inside the device might have broken, but experts concluded this was unlikely and today the coroner said she was not going to make any recommendations because any concerns are being or had been dealt with. Mr Harlan's widow says hopefully the results of the findings of the coroner and the board of inquiry will mean BAE systems safeguarding against a repetition of such a tragedy. Also today, Mr Harlan's pilot Mark Williams spoke movingly of the cockpit filling with mist before he opened his eyes and looked around to realise that his colleague had disappeared. The coroner praised Mr Williams for his courage at a time of the accident and for coming to give evidence today. Alpa, thanks very much. The family and friends of a doctor from Hertfordshire who was killed on an aid mission in Afghanistan have set up a memorial fund in her memory. Dr Karen Wu, who was originally from Stevenage, was shot in an attack on an aid convoy in August. Sally Rourke was at the launch last night of a foundation set up in her name. Karen Wu would have loved this. The band that were going to play at her wedding the man she was going to marry and her family and friends, including one of her brothers, Andy. It's going to be a very emotional evening. It's going to be very, very hard thinking of Karen tonight, but it's also an inspiration to see, to see the, the number of people that were inspired by Karen. This is the first time Andy has felt able to speak on camera about his sister Karen. She was practicing medicine in London before going to Afghanistan, and she was on a trek to the northern part of the country to deliver medical aid when her group was attacked and she was killed. How have things been for you um, and your family since Karen died? Um, to be honest, it's a, it's a struggle every, every day. Um, I think now it's beginning to really hit home. Karen was killed two weeks before she was due to marry Paddy, who she'd met in Kabul. At nights like tonight are a cathartic process. It's nice to be able to bring all her friends and family together and celebrate her life. But uh, when you're sat on your own in your room in Kabul, it, it, it can be a pretty dark, dark uh, um, place. Yeah, it's, a, it's a huge loss to me. When I last saw Karen a few months before she died, she was talking about this event, planning this event. The tragedy, of course, is that she's not here to see it, but her friends have picked up where she left off and raised thousands of pounds. Foundation. Karen had planned the evening to raise money. The foundation are doing just the same, carrying on all her work she showed us in February to help women, children, the sick, making a documentary and shipping out this medical aid from Bupa in Harlow. She had an incredible energy, which she's fortunately left behind in her family and friends, who were all raising their glasses to Karen. Sally Rourke, Anglia News, London.